Back in that bank job. How'd it go, Ed? How you like this? It was a cinch. I'd say the National City Bank ain't as rich as it was before your visit. <laughs> yeah, where's the kid? I don't know. We staked him out down the street from the bank, and when the law broke out and the shooting started, he disappeared. Disappeared. Yeah. You're sure the law didn't get him? I don't know. I. There's Bill Signal now. His lone rider coming. Oh yeah. That must be Ed Grogan. Ain't you been expecting him? Yeah, for a week. Yeah. Hey, that ain't Red Grogan. It's the kid. Send him inside when he gets here. What happened to bring the law out down there? Oh, that bank clerk was a little slow dishing that stuff out, so I let him have it. Not bad. <laughs> Golly, want to see you inside, kid. Well, the great Texas kid. What happened to you? When you talked me into joining this outfit again in National City the other day, Scully, I didn't know you fellas didn't have brains enough to use your heads instead of your guns. What do you mean by that crack? What's on your mind, kid? Why didn't you stay with the boys? I was watching from the end of the street. Why should I start running with them and tag myself with a couple murders? <laughs> so you were scared, huh, kid? Just plain yellow. Would you like to try proving that? Yeah, that's the way you want it. Cut it out, you two. Now, you heard me. Yes, I was scared. So scared I stuck around to run into a United States Marshal and stole him off our trail. United States Marshal? Yeah, name's Jack McKenzie. I know him back home. He taught me how to handle a gun, but he said the man who uses his gun when he doesn't have to is the man who loses his head. So you stole him off our trail, huh? Yeah, he don't think I know you fellas from Adam. If you put the blindfold on that Marshal, kid, you did all right. Them Marshals think they're such smart hombres. Yeah. Hey, Scully. Yeah? Jack Grogan just rode in. All right, Red. All right. All right. Hi, gang. Well, if it ain't the kid, I never thought you'd get him back. Well, I'm here. Scully does a good job of breaking in kids who want excitement. He tried a couple of cowhand jobs, but they found out he once traveled with fellas like us, so here he is. You don't hold it against us, do you, kid? No, I'm through trying to ride him clean. They won't let me, so I'll give it to him the other way. You got sense. How about some coffee over there? We're heating some now. Where the devil you been, Red? I've doubled back all over the country. I ain't slept in three nights. What happened? I had to shake a United States Marshal off of my trail. They're from Junction City, Texas. Might be your Marshal friend, kid. No, he ain't been down there lately. I held up the one-horse store at Junction City. The old man who run it, a fellow by the name of McLean, was a friend of the Marshals. Did you say McLean? Yeah. What do you mean, did run it? Uh, the old fool put up a fight and I drilled him. Back out of the way, Scully. 
Go for your gun, Red. Well, what do you mean? You got about two seconds to live. Are you going crazy, kid? The old man who ran that store was my father. Holy smoke. Any of you boys want red side of this? Taking one of these and getting out of here. You mean you're splitting with us over this? That's right. Wait a minute, kid. Red had it coming to him. I'd have done the same thing myself. Now, uh, how about forgetting it? No, thanks. I'm getting out of here. He'll shoot off his mouth. No, he's all right. He's got brains. Huh? Yeah, that's why I want him back. Jess, you trail him. I'll be down at the trading post in the morning after we tackle the Rock Bend stage at sunup. You can report to me there. All right. Come on. Hello, Sandy. You looking for someone? Nevada. Well, you're sure leery of your back trail, ain't you? <laughs> well, I should be. Isn't that what you taught me? Well, you sure remember your learning. Hi, you old timer. Don't call me old timer. So what are you doing out in this neck of the woods, anyhow? I was sent out by Bat Madison from Washington. I'm trailing the Scully gang. You know, it's a funny thing. I was going to wire you to come out and give me a hand. Been thinking about it all night. You don't say. Well, I wouldn't have been in Dodge Town to get it, because I've been out here trailing the low-down killer for weeks. Thought you was him for a minute. <laughs> hey, you got any Java in that can? Sure, I think there's a couple or two left. Come on. Hey, uh, do you suppose that man that you're after could be a member of this Scully gang? I don't know, maybe. Why? Well, I arrived in National City. I stayed about five minutes after they robbed the bank and killed the clerk and a couple of town people. Well, what is there to... Get all worried about that for. What else would you expect from a bunch of killers like that gang? There's a kid running with that outfit that I used to know back in my hometown. He was a good boy. Had a fine mother, too. I didn't know so much about his father. Anyway, I saw her again a little while back, and she was worried sick the way the kid was turning out. Worried about the kind of company he's keeping, huh? That's right. I caught him in National City yesterday. But he denied being in that robbery. I knew he was lying. He's trailing with the Scully gang, ain't he? So therefore, he's no good. But you let him go. Yep, because I still think that kid is worth saving. Now listen, son. Ain't I always taught you that a good lawman always listens to his head first and his heart last? Especially when he's dealing with a bunch of varmints like this gang. <laughs> Sound like a heap of shooting, don't it? Yeah. Come on the other side of that ridge. Well, I'll get my horse and find out what it's all about.
driver's done for. Sandy, get my canteen. Yeah. It's no use. Take it easy, partner. Mm -hmm. Here, there's water. Thanks. What happened? We've been trying to, to get the rancher's payroll from the bank of National City through to the trading post at Rock Bend. They've held up this stage for the last three trips and killed the guards and drivers. Are you the owner of this line? No. I'm the foreman at the Atwood Ranch. I thought me and one of the boys could get it through for the new owner at the trading post and for the ranchers. But, but... Scully gang? Yeah, it looks like it. I'd say we ought to get on the trail of these varmints and wash them out. What are you thinking, son? Sandy? I'm thinking there's more to this than just a few holdups. And some of the answers might be found in National City. Yeah, or at that trading post. Tell you what, Sandy, you go into National City and have a look around. I'll take the stage into Rock Bend and see what I can find out. But this man said that Rock Bend was nothing but a trading post. Yeah, and he said there was a new owner, too. That's right. Well, that sounds like a pretty good plan, son. Well, let's get started. Take this money on to headquarters. I'm going on to the trading post. What about the kid? I still don't trust him. Don't worry about the kid. I'll see you later. All right. Having trouble, ma'am? Oh, Nancy. How did you know my name was Nancy? Well, I didn't. It just sort of came out like you'd say to a balking mule. A mule? Do I look like one? Well, no, ma'am. That is, when I was a kid, my dad had a fine old muley called Nancy. And he said women and mules were pretty much alike, so... You needn't explain any further. What can I do for you, Mr. McLean? I sort of thought I'd find something to eat here. Well, we don't serve any hot meals, but I think I can find you something for a sandwich and a glass of milk. That'd be fine. Uh, there's one more thing. I think I could use a new outfit. Well, I think I can sell you one. They're over here. What size do you wear? Size 16 for the shirt and 33 waist. Thirty-three. Fine. What size for the shirt? Sixteen. Here we are. And I think I'd better replace this. How would you like a brown one? Swell. How much? Sixteen dollars. Here you are, miss. And now, if you'll add a bar of soap to that and a chance to clean up, I'll be all set for lunch. Well, you'll find everything you need right around the corner. Sure. Nancy. 
Who's the young fellow that just came out? His name's McLean. I don't know him myself. I was going to fix him some lunch. The stage hasn't shown up yet, has it? No, it hasn't, but it's really not due yet. Oh, I'm praying like everything that it'll get through this time. Yes, yeah, so am I. I just came from Tim Atwood's. The ranchers are feeling pretty grim over the situation. The kid here? Yes, he stopped for some grub. And Naylor just came in. Oh. I'm so sorry I sold you the station. I'll gladly pay your money back if you'll let me. Forget it, child. These bad breaks for me aren't your fault. You go ahead and feed your stranger. I'll be in the back room when the stage rolls in. All right. What are you two doing here? Didn't you stop that stage? That's taken care of just like the others. That young fellow that just came in is a Texas kid. McLean? Yeah. He used to belong to my outfit. I want him back. Well, how do they fit? Not bad at all. Well, that was a quick change. I guess I'm kind of hungry. Well, sit down and I'll have something ready for you in a minute. Thanks. Be quiet. I want to listen to what he's got to say. This is the best I could do. That'll help a lot. Thanks. You know, this place sort of reminds me of home. My dad had one just about like it. Only I wasn't around him much. Really? Your folks run this place? My dad did, until he was killed by road agents a couple of months ago. Oh. That's another thing that happened to both of us. Your father, too? Yes, down in Texas. I sold out after it happened. To Mr. Naylor, perhaps you saw him when he came in. Yes, I did. He's an Easterner settling out here for his health. He was living at the Atwood Ranch. It's just my luck. What do you mean? Oh, I have a stake, and I was looking for a setup like this to spend it on. I wouldn't be too disappointed. Why? Ever since Dad was killed, we haven't been able to get a stage through from National City with the ranch's payrolls. Not even one. Hold-ups? Yes. So you see, you'd have bought nothing but trouble. Any idea who's doing it? Oh, we haven't any idea because the guards and drivers have always been killed. I bet if this was my place, I'd get those payrolls through. What makes you think you could get them through? Well, let's say I know how road agents operate. Get out there and sell him a half interest. Tell him you just overheard what he said. Are you crazy? Sure, like a fox. The kid's smart, but he can't outsmart me. What do you mean? He's fishing for a piece of the stage line. Well, go ahead and sell it to him. Won't he be buying his way right back in our hands without knowing it? Till the time's right to use him, then he'll have to play our way. Oh, yeah. I see. Get busy. That sounds very interesting, young man. Mr. Naylor, Mr. McLean. I'm glad to know you, sir. And it's mutual, McLean. You know, I couldn't help overhearing what you just told Nancy. Would you really be interested in buying, say, uh, a partnership in this business? Would I? You just asked me. Well, being what they call a tenderfoot in this country, I think it might be a smart move on my part to take in a seasoned young native like you. What do you say, Nancy? Well, I don't know, Mr. Naylor, but I do think you need someone. I think it's a good idea. How much are you prepared to put in? Well, I've just a thousand dollars here. All right. We'll call it a deal for a half interest. But, Mr. Naylor, you paid me $3,500. you are taking a loss. Well, I think it'll be worth it, Nancy, to have a partner who seems to know what it's all about. I'll go in the office and write up a little partnership agreement. I'll be right back. How was that? Fine. That kid saying he could outsmart us. If he's got any slick ideas about running opposition, we'll take care of that, too. You two better get going back to headquarters. I'll drift up there later tonight after those ranchers get through howling about losing those payrolls again. All right, come on, Jess. He's the nicest and fairest man I ever met. Yeah. He didn't even ask any questions. Where I'm from or what I did before I came here. I guess he can see, too, that any kid who loved a mule called Nancy 
couldn't be anything but honest. Look now, I thought you said you were hungry. You haven't even touched a thing. Well, this kind of took my appetite. Uh, it must be some cowpoke that picked up the job where we left off. That's going to be a nice initiation for the kid in his new legitimate business. Come on. Well, that was mighty fine. How much do I owe you? Have you forgotten? You're a partner now. And that's right, son. Here you are. You sign right there, please. And there's your receipt for the thousand. We'll just keep this in the safe out back. The safe got through. Where's Rocky and Tom? They're in there, miss. I wouldn't go, miss. They're dead. Dead? What happened? A hold up. Oh, what are we going to do? The payroll gone again is bad enough. But losing lives like this. Who are you, sir? Jack McKenzie, the United States Marshal. A Marshal? Does that mean that at last we're going to get some help from the law? I hope so, miss. Well, we're glad to have you, Marshal. Thanks. I'm the owner, or rather, one of the owners of this post and stage line. Well, that's my new partner. Oh, McLean. Hello, kid. Hello, Mackenzie. Small world, ain't it? The marshal knew me back home. That's right. So you're running a stage line now, huh? Yeah, I just bought a half interest today from Mr. Naylor. You see, Marshal, I took it off Miss Drew's hands just after her father was killed. See. Si. Oh, here comes Mr. Atwood. happened again, didn't it? I can see the look on your faces. Yes, Atwood. I'm sorry. Where's Rocky and Tom? In the stage. They were killed in the holdup. Killed? Who are you? United States Marshal, Mr. McKenzie, Mr. Atwood. How do you do? I talked to your foreman just before he died, and he told me what was going on around here. By the way, Marshal, you didn't mention how you happened to be in this territory. The National Insurance Company asked Washington for an investigation. Oh, yes. I suppose they would want an investigation after the losses we've taken. But then they stopped underwriting the payrolls. You mean without that insurance, the ranchers are taking the losses? Well, yes, most of them. He means all but me. You see, the dry season hit my outfit pretty hard. If it wasn't for Naylor, I'd be out of business. Oh, forget about that, Tim. I hope, Marshal, we get some action against these outlaws. Not just words. Well, that's why I'm here. And I think we ought to start the ball rolling by calling a meeting of all the ranchers. Sure. When? Well, it's still early. How about late this afternoon? Fine. Where? Could we use your post, Mr. Naylor, for a meeting? Well, of course, certainly. I'll have my boys round the ranches up and have them here. Do you mind, Naylor, if I take Rocky and Tom home on the stage, as they are? Why, of course not. I'll Go be ahead. glad to drive for you, Mr. Atwood, and then I can bring the stage back. Thank you, son. And I'll go along with you, too. This is going to hit Mom Atwood pretty hard. She'll need somebody. Thanks, Nancy. So you know the kid, Marshal? Yeah. Seems like a good boy. Although I don't know a thing about his past. You see, I'm an Easterner settling out here for my help. Now, won't you come inside? It's cooler. No, thanks. I think I'll spend the day looking up some of those ranches. I'd like to talk to them individually before the meeting. Good idea. I'll give you a list of their places. Come on. Get it. Come on, get it. Hey, come on. Get it. Get it. Now 
I know you don't like that harness. Doggone it, don't you cause me to build a fire under you. Come on, get up there. I talked to him for an hour, but I couldn't trip him up on anything. I guess the insurance company is responsible for his being here, all right. But somehow I can't swallow his acquaintance with the kid being as casual as they both let on. No, I've got a hunch it ain't. Maybe the kid didn't fool him yesterday. Holy smokes, that means he might have trailed the kid right here to us. He won't be around very long. What have you got in mind? Make it fast. I've got to get back to the post for that meeting. I want to be there before Mackenzie gets back from talking to the ranchers. You said you directed him to the Saunders ranch first, didn't you? Yes. That means he circled around hitting the Atwood place last. Right. Well, he's never going to get to that meeting. With him out of the way, our troubles are over. You go on back to the post. We'll take care of it. Come on, boys. Goodbye, Marshal. I feel a lot better after our little talk. Fine. I'll see you at the post tonight. Well, you got to come this way. We'll cover the road from both sides. Ed, you and Steve work from over there. Right. time to explain now, but I would like a chance to talk to you. All right. Hey, what in tarnation is going on in this neck of the woods? First I hear six guns. Then a fellow comes riding by me like a streak of lightning. You say he kept on going? Yeah, clean down the road. That fellow's an outlaw. He's wanted for murder. Get going and stop him. Ed, you stay here. Say, what is this? A sheriff's posse or something? Yes. What have you got here, stranger? Well, now, my friend, you name it, and I've got it. Now, of course, you won't find in there what you're expecting. But that's full of my favorite concoction. Now, here is my favorite bottle. It's good for dandruff, delirium tremens, and has been used on spavin horses, and very good for lead poisoning. Will you have a little shot? I'm not interested. Well, it's too bad, my friend, because this bottle has made many a use out of an old man. Well, too bad. Uh, oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. That's the woman's department. Oh. oh, well, pardon me. Maybe you'd be interested in the frock coat. Or better still, I've got a cutaway. The very latest fashion, right from New York. Fits you perfect. Now, you know, it adds to the dignity of the sheriff's office to see him properly clothed for speeches, weddings, christenings, and funerals. Like try it on? Well, we'll forget it for now, peddler. Maybe I'll see you later. Better. Dang busted, why didn't we take him? You know they're out to kill you. Yeah, but arresting that bunch now would tip our whole hand and maybe lose us half the pot. Oh, you mean the McLean kid and some of the others? Yeah, and I'm beginning to believe he is into it, up to his neck.
You know, Sandy, I think this wagon is one of the best stunts you've pulled yet. And it certainly did come in handy just now. You know, I bought this whole shebang from a drunken peddler over in National City this morning. Say, what did you find out over there? I found out something mighty interesting. Well, you better talk fast, because I've got to be at a rancher's meeting at the post. Well, the Star Line Company is going to put their main stage route through Rock Bend as a shortcut to Carson City and the gold fields. Now, that would seem to me that to make that land around the post mighty valuable as the town site. Say, I'm thinking the same thing. And then they're going to extend it on through Black Rock Pass being financed by some Easterners. Easterners? Yes, why? That just checks up. So listen, Sandy, I think it'd be a good idea if you get to that meeting before I do. Oh, so that I can spot the ones that don't expect you to arrive, huh? That's right, and I'll be plenty late. All right. Gave us a slip, no sign up. All right. Yes, you get the trade and post and see what you can find out. We'll handle that marshal later when we figure out his hand. Yeah, Naylor ought to be some help in that. Maybe. Get started, Jess. We'll meet you at headquarters. Right. Will you, Hopkins? I wonder where that marshal is. He left my place long before me. Well, we might as well get on to the meeting. We're used to keeping those men in there waiting. We know pretty well what his ideas are. Wait a minute. Isn't that him? Here's the rest of the clothes, miss. It was a good idea for Mr. Naylor to buy these. Yes, I think so. Now, I think I'll go out and take care of my horse. Well, you'll find oats and water out in back of the barn. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry I'm late, men, but I thought I had enough time to do a little investigating up in the rocks. Did you find anything interesting, Marshal? Any trace of those outlaws? No, I drew a blank this time. Everybody here? Yes, they're all inside. Well, let's get on with the meeting. Might as well. All right, gentlemen, the marshal's here now. We can get started. Go ahead, Mackenzie. You've got the floor. After talking to you ranchers this afternoon, you all agreed that the most important thing is to get your money here so that you can pay off your health. Is that right? It That's sure right. is. I guess I'm the only one who stopped having anything left in the bank since the first payroll was stolen. And there's been four cents. Oh, stop worrying about that, Atwood. I'll be glad to help you out again. You're sure being a good friend, Naylor. Oh, well, I'm protected. You've given me liens on some more of your land each time I've helped you. All right, Marshal, let's go ahead. Naylor told me this morning that you think you can get the payrolls through from National City. I know I can. If they let me do it in my own way and won't ask any questions. It goes for you, too, Marshal. All right, kid. With the responsibility he's willing to take, I don't blame him for not trusting anybody. I suggest we give him a chance. What do you say? Well, naturally, I'm willing. But I'm a little partial, since I've taken him in as a partner. Is anybody against the plan? Well, it suits me all right. And I have just money enough left in the bank to do it. All right, boys. I have some blank drafts in the office. You can fill out for your payrolls and give them to the kid. We'll make them out now. I'll make one of my own account for you, Edward. Thank you. So you don't want to take me into your confidence, huh? No, because I can tell you don't trust me, even though you haven't got anything on me. Sure there's no other reason? I don't know what you mean. I have a hunch this Scully gang is back of this. You have? Yeah.
Hey, you want, kid? We have honor these at the bank in National City. When are you figuring to take the stage out, kid? That's a question, isn't it, Mr. Edward? <laughs> My mistake. The boy's all right, Naylor. Looks like he's using his head. We'll be expecting to hear from you, Marshal. I'll be around. Good luck, son. Thanks. So that's where you're perched, you buzzard. been up to now? I'm down at the stables. I just come back from another ride. Another ride? What happened? Sit down. You know, this place is deader than a skin steer. That kid ain't gonna be back for quite a spell. Well, where'd he go? Listen, son. I want you to get this straight. That kid is no good. Clean through and through. But right now, he's holding a power with that Scully gang. Well, what happened? When Nancy and Naylor Went over to Atwood's. They left the kid here to bed down the post. As soon as it got dark, he sneaked out and went directly to that cabin in the rocks, where I followed that other buzzard. Well, that was enough to convince me, so I came on back. Well, I'm not too surprised. And another thing. Before he left, he harnessed the stage and is right behind the post now. Aiming on leaving tonight, huh? Looks like it. Say. We've got to figure out a way of getting those payrolls away from him before he turns it over to the Scully gang and a fake holdup. Well, I'll bet that's what they got in their mind, too. I've got it. I've got a plan that'll convince me once and for all whether the kid is crooked or not. Now, you stay here and keep an eye on Naylor. Now, here's what I figure on doing. My deal is that I want an even split with you, Scully. And I'll handle that new partner of mine when it comes to really taking over the post. In no time, we can make it so tough on these ranchers that we can squeeze them out and really take over the valley. You think you can handle this fellow Naylor, huh? Can I? Well, he's just a dumb city galoot that's passing out his money like a missionary. And he thinks I'm going to get him out of his spot. <laughs> Kid, i got to give you credit. You sure got brains. We thought you didn't like us anymore. Oh, don't be crazy. I was just looking for a real setup to let you in on. Well, what's your answer? The deal. When do you figure on hitting Twin Rocks with those payrolls so we can get them? When they find the stage gone in the morning, Naylor and that smart Alec Marshall will think I took off at Senate. They won't be looking for you back until the evening tomorrow. Yeah, and by leaving tonight, it'll bring me back to Twin Rocks about noon. Get it? And then in the afternoon, when they're expecting you, we'll be there to finish them off, including your friend Marshall McKenzie. Yeah, that's the idea. Well, I got to move on. I want to make National City by daylight. You're all right, kid. We're going places together. So long. So long. So long. Who does he think he is? Use your head, Naylor, and let the kid think he's using his. And he is at that. I think it's funny, you and him partners, and him not knowing it. Why the devil didn't you tell him? Wait till he delivers. We get that marshal out of the way. It's plenty of time to let the kid in on everything. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. gentleman asks the lady to meet him, he should at least have the courtesy not to be late. I'm sorry I'm late, but I got held up. But you did wait. What did you have to talk about that's so important? Us. Us? Oh. Oh, I guess you mean about helping out at the post. Yes, partly. Well, certainly now that you're with Mr. Naylor, there's hardly any reason for me to stay. Oh, yes, there is every reason. Well, anyway, I have a plan in mind that'll fix it so you can stay on if you like and would like to make some real money out of the post someday. I don't understand. There's lots of things you don't understand about me. If you'll sit down on the porch a minute, I'll explain it to you. All right. We've got to keep an eye on that stage.
Suppose it don't work. And he starts shooting. That's the chance I've got to take. If he gives up that money easy, then I know he's crooked and with the Scully gang. But if he puts up a fight to save it, he's honest. Well, in that case, you can't shoot back. And you might get killed. I might. He's pulling out now. Listen, Sandy. If this does work out, I'll be back by 1 o'clock. Then we can pin Naylor down and go after the Scully gang. You know, it's mighty nice of you, Nancy, to get me some of this grub so I don't have to hit the trail with an empty bread basket. M Mr. Hopkins, are you sure you haven't seen Marshal McKenzie this morning? No. Nope. Say, what makes you so nervous this morning, young'un? The stage was gone when Nancy and I got here this morning, so the kid must have lit out at dawn. And it's like we figured. He'll hit the dangerous part of the trail this evening. You know, that's what I've been thinking. Might not be a bad idea that we suggested the Marshal and three of us ride out and meet the boy tonight. Say, at uh, Twin Rocks. Or he might run into trouble. You can't wait until evening. Mr. Atwood, have you seen Marshal McKenzie? No, child. Well, Nancy, what's wrong with you? You've been acting strange all morning. Oh, I can't wait for him any longer. Anyway, you two should know. Know what? The kid's in danger, or at least you will be if we don't get help to him at Twin Rocks before noon. Twin Rocks? Noon? Yes. Nancy, what are you talking about? The kid told me all about himself last night, how he used to be a member of the Scully gang. They're the ones that have been robbing our stages. Oh, I can't believe it. Go on, Nancy. Mr. Naylor, he bought him with you to help us catch that gang, because he wanted to go straight. You see, one of them killed his dad, who used to run a trading post just like this down in Texas. He went to the gang's hideout last night, pretending to be in with them. He arranged with them to hold him up at Twin Rocks. I was supposed to tell the marshal so he could set a trap for them at noon. And where the devil is that marshal? Wait a minute, Atwood. He isn't going to help you now. Mr. Naylor! What is this, Naylor? You'll find out. Get him up, Atwood. You're the one to get him up, Naylor. Give me that thing. Listen, Atwood. I ain't got time to do much gabbing. Because Nevada's about to get his gizzard shot out by a kid that he's always wanted to believe was on the level. And I wouldn't let him. This city slicker is working with the Scully gang. Was out to rob you of your ranch with them liens. You're pretty smart, aren't you? That's why I'm a marshal. Here. You take care of him. I've got to get to Nevada and see if I can stop him.
Well, here you go. Fine stunt you pulled. I didn't expect to see you here after that one. Who was the masked monkey you had lift the payrolls back down the road? Don't pull any tricks on me, kid. Hand over that money box. It ain't in there. Of course it ain't. You fellas got it already. He's stalling. Maybe he's double-crossed us. Maybe he's got a trap set for us right here. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'll take that gun. We better get out of here, Scully. Yeah, and he's going with us. Get down, kid, and pile on with Ed. Guess you know what to do with the station to make it look like the kid had an accident. Yeah. Give me a hand, Steve. Get up there. Kid's on the level. If he gave you that money, he's heading for trouble. I got it all right. But he's not on the level, or he wouldn't have given it to me without a fight. Now listen, Nancy told me all about his plans, and I know what I'm talking about. Come on. Kid's not here, and this thing has been faked. Hey. What you got was an empty box. Uh, no wonder he tossed it off so willingly. Sandy, the kid is on the level. He hid that stuff under here to protect it, no matter what happened to him. That's what I wanted to tell you. And maybe plenty's happening to him up in that cabin. You're right. Let's hide this under the stage and get to him as quick as we can. I followed them down here, and I know their back trail. Come on. young friend. If you're going to do some straight talking and do it fast. It'll be slow work getting past that lookout. We can't waste that much time. I'm going in the front way. You take care of him if he spots me. Right. left of you to keep your old man company where Ed Bogan sent him. But I'm trying to tell you, Scully. Get inside and you better make up your mind to quit stalling. All right, we're going to find out just what kind of a smart trick you've been trying to pull. Now, oh, Mr. Texas kid, 
You do the talking, we'll do the listening. I don't feel like saying a thing. You'll feel a lot worse if you don't. I'll let you guess. This is your last chance. Who's got that payroll money? I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. Get him out of that chair. Now, Ed, go to work on him. I'm going to like this. Get him up. You see about the kid, Nevada. I'll keep them covered. Take it easy, kid. I'll get you to a doctor. Uh, it's no use, Marshal. You made it, huh? Nancy told you? Sure. And I found the payrolls under the stage. That, that's good. Come on. I want to get you to a doctor. Oh, I'm done for. Maybe it's better this way. Save the law a lot of trouble. Maybe this will help square us, too, huh, Marshal? Sure. I knew you'd come through if I gave you a chance. Thanks. Do me one more favor, will you, Marshal? What is it, kid? Tell... Nancy, that I'm wishing her happiness. She'll find... She'll find somebody someday that... the kind of a fellow that's right for her. I'll see that she understands. Thanks. That's the way his kind of men do things, Nancy. That's the way he wanted you to see it. I think I understand. He hoped you would. Don't you worry, Marshal. With my cowhand sitting on Naylor and what's left of that gang, they won't break loose. Well, that's fine. Now, all we'll have to do is send over Sheriff Edwards from National City. You'll take them off your hands. And now that you and the ranchers have recovered all those stolen payrolls, I don't think you'll have a bit of trouble holding your land. Yes, but what about the post? Oh, that's all been taken care of, Marshal. I paid back Mr. Naylor all his money, and Nevada got a receipt for it. Well, then it looks like our work is all finished. All we have to do is stop off in National City and leave these stolen bank funds. That's right, Sandy. Well, let's go. Yeah, I guess we better. So long, Mr. Atwood. Goodbye and thanks. Goodbye, Nancy. Goodbye, Nevada. And don't worry. I'll be all right. Good girl. Goodbye, Mr. Hoffman. Goodbye, Miss Nancy. Looks like I'm heading for Texas and you for Nevada again. That's right, Sandy. But one of these days, I'm going to fool you and take you up on that old invitation and go down to that hotel of yours and just sit a spell. <laughs> well, them rocking chairs are waiting. Come on. Uh, I wish I could, but I got Washington orders waiting for them in Nevada. So long, Sandy. So long, Nevada.